afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to our final talk of the day and uh, to me this is a very special topic which is very dear in me and we're going to talk about doomsday sign for the stock market and particularly it's no point talking about uh, very uh, bearish and very so-called sad uh, event but more of looking into how to profit from the stock market crash uh, why this topic because I think this topic is going to be truth in some point of time and I think the stock market is coming when we not be sure but I'm going to give you the fact and the reason that it is coming and we're also going to look at uh, one or two indicators that uh, I have uh, read and done enough research to know, to know that that will give you an edge to know if the doomsday sign is going to come right? and we're going to also look at what you can do now and how you can profit to it and then we follow by in Q&A so that's what, how I'm going to be talking for this topic is that okay? next slide right how many of you believe uh, that we are in actually in a critical junction here right uh, are we recovering I know that we didn't have a recession uh, we didn't really we did have actually we did have a recession back in uh, 2009 and uh, recovered how many believe that we are fully recovered now this question may not be pertaining that importance to Malaysia but I want to draw your attention to the market okay the market because the economic uh, health of the country is which is recession recover actually deals with the stock market now remember stock market is the leading indicator of the economic health or the economic activity of the, of each country how many believe that uh, we may be uh, moving into a recession just just raise your hand okay how many do you think we are recovering and um, intent is strong enough okay we, we got a, some good thing okay how many of you think we are in uh, in the bull market? Still in the bull market? All right. How many say? So how many of you would not do or raise your hand no matter what I say or tell you to do? All right. We always get okay. Now let's look at the trend we had so far. Okay. The trend has been up so far. Look at this uh, KLCI, the Busa chart now. Now, I hope you can see this, the number of years right at the below here, the 97, 98, the 80s, the 90s, and the year 2000. Now, despite the market has moved uptrend from when we started off at around 50 to 1500, if you were to buy at the height of the 97 here and the height of the 2007, today, you should be only slightly up. Okay, you should be slightly up. So, the market... Uh, may not have moved much depending where you have bought it okay so if you bought it at the high you're not that much so what I'm trying to say in here our market let's go to the next slide has moved up but along the way it has been punctuated by many sharp sell down shown here okay uh, look at here we have uh, one two three four five six seven seven okay seven sell down or recession over the last 33 years and are we going to get one this is my prediction okay my prediction is we may have a possible recession but before that we're going to get the stock market meltdown before 2015 and I'm going to conclude that and after at the end of presentation I'm going to ask you this question are we going to have it you can tell me now let's look at the uh, I'm going to step through it uh, the timeline of the KLSC uh, for those of you uh, who have been here if not born in the 80s may not know that uh, in the 1979 late 1979 we have a, a oil crisis yeah uh, there was a dispute all and all shot up to a very high level that immediately the uh, the global economy especially US was not prepared for that as, as a result there were not enough uh, supply of uh, petrol or crude oil however the demand was strong so that has lead to a crisis in the US and that somehow also brought over to our shore we have, and then we have our first official uh, recession yeah since 97 was the electronic uh, crisis back when we have the uh, manufacturing and there was a slowdown crisis uh, we have a very small period during the 1987 
US stock market crash. Okay, we have that one. So since then, the 87, we have a very good period around 88, all the way up to the 93. So we have a very good uh, so-called circular bull. Okay, 88 to 93. Uh, that's almost five years, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six years. Six years of circular bull market. So that was a good time and the market went up high and then immediately we have a meltdown of a circular. That's, that's what, there's an old saying. The higher it goes up, the further it will fall down. And that's what actually happened in, in 94. And then we move on to 96, 97. I think most of you have known and have seen it. You've been in the market long enough. The Asian financial crisis. All right. At the same time, we also complete the Petronas Twin Tower. I just want to draw your attention now. Remember the Petronas Twin Tower happened in 97 because this is what I'm going to refer later on to my further slides. Yeah. All right. Then we have a, a financial crisis sell down all the way to the 300. Then we have the US tech bubble and the 911. Okay, 911 happened in year 2001. We hit the bottom there. And since year 2000, we had another great bull run that what we had uh, in the previous uh, early 1990s from 2000 all the way to 2007. And then finally, another recession which is actually caused by the US uh, through the bailout of banks. I'm sure you heard that one before. Uh, AIG, CD Banks, uh, General Motors, uh, uh, GE, all these American companies were bailed out by U.S. taxpayer money. And because of our close relationship and trading partner with U.S., we were not spared. And uh, when U.S. recovered through uh, many reasons that uh, the earlier speaker has talked about, but one fundamental is, in, is ample liquidity. Okay, The word is ample liquidity between a lot of money, the velocity of money, uh, uh, cash and uh, easy access to, to loans and a lot of people who make money pump up the uh, paper assets and where we are today at the uh, 1500 now moving on to 2010 are we going to re recession how many of you think so just raise your hand oh okay good hmm. next slide now uh, we, we cannot uh, draw away from the US market I know some of you said that will probably ask me, look, Martin, I'm just interested in the Malaysian market. Why are you telling me a lot about Dow Jones, right? And uh, you look back to the modern stock market that we had since 2000, right? Uh, except for 201, let me just draw your attention to the chart in here. You can see the red line is the Dow Jones 30, the industrial index, and the blue one is the FBM KLCI. You can see whenever the market goes up, the, uh, the uh, CI will move up. According with the Dow Jones, the only magnitude of it is the lag time. Okay, as you can see, uh, in 2008, as a matter of fact, uh, the CI were lagging about three quarters. Oh, sorry, three months. Okay, this point in here, and since when? However, when it falls, it falls the same way. It recover. It also recovered the same thing. So on a year-to-year -year basis, the direction has not changed. Okay, the year-to-year -year basis direction change in 2001 with the exception every year when we see a downfall in Dow Jones and KLCCI. So that's why they say whenever Dow catches uh, uh, sneezes, uh, most of the country in the world is going to catch a cold. And that's the reason. Uh, it's only the magnitude. Uh, just look in here again. And Dow Jones, when Dow Jones recovered uh, in 2009, they had a 19% almost, and Malaysia recovered by 45%. When Dow Jones recovered, uh, another, not recovered, had another run, uh, a good run, another bull market was 11%. We went up higher on the 19%. So, no matter what you do, we cannot turn our backs towards the Dow Jones because that is more like where we come from. If Malaysia were to be the child, Dow Jones would have to be the father, right? That's my point. Now, let's move on to the next chart. So, economically speaking, every time when America sneezes, especially the stock market, the rest of the world, and Malaysia, is no obsession. It's going to catch a cold. No doubt about it. Oh, right. I'm, I'm sorry I have to bore you with this, uh, uh, with this fact in here. I'll try to make my presentation as simple as possible. Uh, we cannot get away by looking at the facts of the KLSE bull and bear market. 
Okay, I know this is heavy, but this is very important. You got to pay attention to the specific uh, range of the value, right? Um, in 2009 to uh, 2010, did we lose in the market? Did we gain? Yes, we did gain, right? In 2009, if we go back to the previous chart, uh, we had a gain of 45%. In 2010, we have a gain of 19%. So that has definitely says that we are not in a bear market. Now, this is very important. Right? The bull market and the bear market comes in two forms. The big one or the small one. The big one, we call them the major bull market. And the small one, we call them the, uh, the minor bull market. The big one, the major bull market, they actually run for a longer time frame. Okay, a longer time frame we can call it super cycle. So far in the Malaysian bear market, we didn't have a long uh, bear market. Simply is because Malaysia is a growing country. Our country continued to grow at the GDP of uh, average about five percent over the last uh, ten to twenty years. So we don't ever had a really bear market. However, our bear market are very cyclical. It's very short, two to three years. But that still does not take away. Our attention that the bear market or stock market sell now will come. Now, looking over the period of 33 years that we had, uh, we almost had one coming for us every five to six years. Okay, we have a one five to six years. Now, on the flip side, if you have a bear market, we're gonna get a bull market. Now, the bull market is very interesting. Uh, uh, everybody loves a bull market. Everybody loves a winner. Nobody likes a loser. Alright, so in the bull market, we have a maximum gain of 98%. That was back in 1993. Right, yeah, the, uh, the average decline here. Okay, the average decline. This is not decline. This is a typo mistake. This will be uh, incline. Okay, that's about 29%. Now, we had two uh, circular bull in here back in the 1990s and uh, year 2000. However, our bull market is either going to be a major one or a minor one. Now, what we have here in 2009, 2010, and 2011, how many of you say we, we are having a circular major bull market where we will have a 10 years of bull market? Raise your hand. How many of you say that we will have a cyclic bull market? Okay, so no one really agrees. Now, we, you have to know where we are because we have to draw a line in the sand and saying that are we in a major bull market or in a minor bull market? So this is something the economists have to tell us. But look at what the facts presented today and by looking at the charts and what are the economy indicated entered. Okay. Uh, as of 29th of March, okay, uh, the KLSC for information is only up 0.1%. What does that mean? Okay. If we think we are in a major bull market, Okay, now a major bull market, remember, lasts about 7 to 10 years. Okay, maybe not that long. Let's look at it a shorter time, like 5 years. Okay, if we have a 5 year, so simply what it says, this is the end of the third year, we will still have a gain. But these are based on my research that I've done over the last three years by comparing the KLSC and the Dow Jones. If we have a down market, consequently, we will always follow by moon market because it actually bull market is when the economy activity and economy health is in, is improving then we have a down market where we have a recession because the market has to pause we cannot be always growing every year yeah we cannot be always growing here at times we always have to look back and pause and this is where we have to talk about business cycle or economic cycle right so looking at this the uh, first year we have a, uh, a higher gain second year uh in the mid 13 and 15 and the third year almost in a single digit and our remember our correlation with the klsc and the dow jones is very very close so the data that's presented here are pretty much in line right so in the um, third year right we have a four percent uh, gain in dow jones and in malaysia if you look back the last uh 30 years of history, we have about 2 to 3 percent gain in the fourth year. If we think this is going to be a cyclic, which is a short bull market, it's almost zero. Now, the looking at the third year, the probability of ending with a positive, right? For the KLSME, we have a 20 percent chance. Okay, we have a 20 percent chance that this year may end up with a gain instead of a loss. So, bear in mind, if we do have a gain, the gain is going to be very small.
So what does that leave? If you are 2001, it's going to be a small gain. The fourth year, 2011, may be a sell down year. So that is why we have to identify them. So the next thing is that we have to figure out what tools to identify and what are things that we use of. Uh, you have listen to Gavin uh, earlier this morning, he talks about the uh, market stages and how to identify market tops. And in the same way, we also use that as a fund manager in here. Now, let's look at how to identify them. And uh, you may agree that everybody is different. Your tools, your little things that you use, your little charts, your little system may be different. But at the end, we want to come out of it and scratch and to protect our asset. That is the most important thing. Okay, so if this system fits you, adopt it. If you want to learn more, come and join our seminars. Come and talk to us. Okay, now the we cannot run away from the principle of the market. And the guy who really started up is Richard Wyckoff uh, back in the 1900s. And uh, he made his mark back in the 1930s by observing how insider and smart money move uh, funds through into the market and to what. Uh, what he simply stated, there are four stages of a market cycle. And that's a picture of Richard I. Wyckoff. You can see at the top there. Uh, market will go through accumulation as what we did uh, back in uh, two early 2009. And after that, we have a mark out from 2010. Mark up until what we have here. Now, the stage three that we have, the number three, it's called distribution. Now, it's called distribution because we want to know where is our market now. Now, currently, what we're having now at 1500, uh, I'm not going to point your chart, but you can go back and check your chart. Now, the question is, remains, are we at distribution or are we at accumulation? So, this is a, a point upon the, I think we are likely to be more at the, at the uh, distribution if we see high volume, huh? high volume at the uh, bottom. Of the range around 240 and if the market were to go higher around 1580 if you see small volume okay then that could be likely a sign of inside the distribution now remember okay we are looking at the probabilistic sense of the market okay because no one can predict the market right in the long run but however there are some tools we can use which give us a very close approximity we don't need to be 100 percent sure but we need some sort of approximation so after the distribution at stage three where our uh, insider who knows more than most of us here they will start to distribute and the market comes back down then we have what we call a decline market or a Markdown, which is a state for, and then the cycle continue. So this is the principle of Richard Wyckoff that all the worst and every market, no matter whether it's uh, commodities, stocks, uh, unit trust, all has to go through this stage, the four stages of the market. And remember, the thing that never lie is price and volume. Okay, the price will never lie, but politicians, uh, media, they will tell you everything is okay. No recession, we will print more money. Okay, but tell, look at the chart. What's the chart telling you? Is the chart going higher or not? Okay, so that's very important, able to detect what is a lie and what is the truth, because the truth of the market is price and volume and VSA. Excuse me. Now, uh, how many of you seen this movie called Inside Job? Okay, the movie has a very clear message, and that's the reason why we have uh, recession uh, following in uh, sorry uh, market sell down year two hundred eight. The movie called Inside Job is produced by Charles Ferguson. It's a Hollywood style movie, but the message is quite clear, right? It's because of people like Bernanke, Tim Geithner, who used excessive uh, leverage and to a certain degree greed right to make sure they remain in power to pump artificially the US economy and to me that's human hubris look like Tim Geithner right he's talking to uh, Ben Bernanke and hubris has been defined as the haughty behavior by people who is arrogant enough to think they are they might rank up there with the gods but it's a bad attitude that inevitably lead to a fall so Bernanke or Bubble Bernanke as we call him or Helicopter Bernanke thinks that 
he is God. Okay, he thinks he is God. He can rescue the American people and the U.S. people out from recession and bring him to the next golden era. But the fact that he is telling a lie, and this is why I'm going to show you why he is telling you a lie. The U.S. is continued to print money. It's inflating and it's leveraging by imprinting. So what that means is as more money flood into the system, paper assets like stocks get elevated. Okay, Pong uh, may agree with me that the U.S. market in 2009, 2010 was um, lifted up by a lot of ample liquidity. Okay, so much money that it is that the the Federal Reserve balance sheet just shot all the way. Look at that. In 2009, when the QE1 begins printing, look at the red line. It just shot up, right? So when the market was down from the S&P 500 was down back in 2007, the QE came in and started printing money. At the same time, when they printed money, the stock goes up. But notice the blue line stands for CCI index, stand for Commodity uh, Cycle Index. Okay, Commodity Cycle Index. It tells you the commodities such as crude oil, palm oil, wheat, uh, copper, gold. What happened to them? Have you noticed that your food prices has gone up? Some of you may have read my uh, April stock market comment talk about uh, my trip to my favorite restaurant and how much the food prices has gone up to 8 by 10%. Okay, and also look at our, our CPI of Malaysia. That has gone on to thanks to the US printing press. Okay, thanks to the US printing press. Next, the tipping point for US economy. This is a good cartoon I just want to share with you. Now, a tipping point means how little small things, such as the Japanese earthquake, that the radiation leakage that they had almost uh, back from March 7 to today, March 9 is almost one month. It is still leaking. God, it is still leaking. Then we have the uh, Portugal and, and Greek crisis. Every week, we are almost getting a lot of these crises. I'm sure next week, when you leave and go back, there will always be another crisis too, another Libyan crisis. And there will be a uh, printing of a QE3 uh, and beyond. I'm sure that QE3 is going to come in, but those of you who don't know, the QE2 is bound to stop by June. So what that means is by June, there's no more stimulus of economic uh, activity by the uh, by the U.S. government. They will take the money off from the stock market or from the people. Guess what's going to happen? Stock market's going to come down. So what are they going to do next if the stock market comes down? They're going to print more money. That's why I'm very confident that the U.S. government will continue with the QE3 to pump more money and there will always be QE4, QE5 until the politicians really sit down and how to address the fundamental of the US economy. US is not only old but it's fat and it's lazy. Okay? So the tipping point of US can be any of this which has come in many of these small things that eventually will make a big difference and then finally US is gonna slide into a US recession. Now what are the worrying signs? Okay my friends the economist has warned us that uh this is a, uh, a chart here that we have. Uh, what we do is that we divide the uh, crude oil, the uh, West Texas Intermediate oil price over U.S. core uh, in inflation. Sorry, core CPI. Okay, and you notice what it simply says that every time when the ratio of the oil over the inflation crosses the forty times here, 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 and here. A US recession cannot be avoided. Right? We have higher food oil prices, we have five higher oil prices. Do you know what was the closing price for crude oil last night? It's one zero eight. Now this is very important. Uh, if the crude oil were to go any higher to one twenty and one forty, we are bound to have a global recession. And this is the chart to justify it. Now let's look at it from a very uh, analytical point. We have a global uh, production of close to about 86 to 90 million barrels a day. Okay. Now US being one of the largest uh, 
economy consume almost 25% of the global consumption. China and India constitute almost 10 to 12% consumption of the worldwide. Now, who is the biggest oil producer in the world? Anybody? The Saudis, right? Now, the Saudi itself produce up to 12%, 12 to 13% of the world uh, supply. Now, lately, you have heard about the Libyan uh, crisis that you had, which is still ongoing despite so many weeks, has caused the oil to spike up. Now, that is because oh, Libya is only producing 1 to 2% of the global supply. Now, think of it, that is only 1 or 2%. With Saudis, which is producing 10 to 12%, which is almost the same as China consumption. Now, if something happened to the Saudi, what's going to happen to the global production of oil? There won't be any more oil. There won't be enough oil. China and India consume almost as much as what Saudi could make. So the Chinese being uh, more having more money than the US, they are going to buy it up. When they buy it up for their own country, for their countrymen to use, what's going to have the oil price? All the inventory will go high. And if you have that, prices going up. There you go. That's the formula. The US recession is coming. When? We don't know. You got to keep an eye on the oil prices. Right? Let's move on. So, now, this is the best part that we are coming to. We're going to look at things, okay, that actually help us and plan us to know when the big move is coming. Now, we're going to look at the indicator that moves market. And we've been talking a lot about frequency event and risk right so what we want to have is have a little small things that able to predict okay in the short term what is going to happen to the market we know for long term it is coming whether it's a economic slowdown or a stock market sell down you name it it is coming so everyone is different i'm sure that some of you will have a little thing a tool or a chart now if the market got uh, reach this point you will sell here if the market reach this point you will buy here so i'm sure most of you have the thing but many of these things work some of them don't work but there are some who really works a few of these and i've done enough research and this is concur by another fellow famous hedge fund manager in the 1980s and 1990s now the indicator that we're going to talk about is actually VIX. V I X stand for volatility index or volatility index indicator. How many of you have heard about volatility index indicator? Raise your hand. Okay, good, good, good. Some of you have heard. Now, volatility index is something that you often see if you in tune with the market or if you switch on your Bloomberg or your CNBC, just like I have this on the chart, volatility grips the market. It's a VIX. It's called VIX. And there are many VIX. There are VIX on S&P 500. There are VIX on gold. There are VIX on corn and all. So we can actually tell what is happening. Now what VIX actually measure is actually measure the fear and panic as opposed to complex, com, sorry, comple uh, complacency means people are not moving. Now, this fellow in here, his name is Victor Niederhofer and uh, he is a very famous uh, fund manager in the 80s and 90s and in this book, The Education of a Speculator, I highly regard you, you should take this book and read. He is also a statistician and uh, as well as a finance professor and Howard Gregg and he was Josh Soros partner too. So what he did was he took the, all the indicators in the world back in the 19, uh, uh, 1990s as well up to 2000 that works in the world and he tested almost 200 of them because being a statistician he has his edge he know what works and what don't work and you know what after going all this whether they're testing out MACD RSI CCI moving average he found only two indicator works okay only two indicator one of them was Wix. So in this book, he shared his secret. Do you want to know what's the second indicator that works? Come on. I like to hear that. Price and volume. So the truth is, the secret to knowing and timing the market is having price and volume and knowing your Wix. Now, this is very important. Knowing Wix is one thing. Right, a uh, next chart. Okay, now we did say fear and complacency index is the weak indicator, but more importantly, we need to know 
what does the value mean okay now I'm going to go through very slowly and just to tell you how we intend to use week here now you may notice the in the uh, Libyan crisis that we we had the weeks jump as much as 24 percent so the weeks shot up in here now before 2008 every rolling major crisis of market crash back in the 98 all right, uh, the 99 2001 uh, where we have a bubble tech and uh, 2001 and also the uh, 2002 as well all right every major market crash the weeks goes up to this special value it's called 48 now 48 was the high of every time before 2000 that value now the 48 value is is the most powerful buy signal in the world what it simply means that when weeks is high there is fear there's panic like what Warren Buffett say buy when there's panics on the street so that's what it is when the value is high people are fearful you should be out there buying not selling okay so if you attended this course or this talk you would know when there is fear you got to be buying so one value to look at it's actually the wicks now what we're going to do currently the wicks value is currently priced at 18 as of 29 now wicks is defined as this what you do is that it measures the volatility okay volatility of the movement in the next 30 days so if you have 18 divided by 12 will give you a value that will show you the percentage of movement for the next 30 days okay so that's now so when it's low value like what we had here in 2005 6 and 7 when the market was really bullish people were very complacent so the value was low that simply means people are only buying call call option because weeks actually measure the movement of all option traded in the US S&P 500 okay it measures whether people are buying more puts or buying more call when weeks is high people want the protection they will buy more puts when the market is very very bullish the weeks will be low people want to buy more call because they want the profit from continuing market trend when they trend higher now so notice the spike every time there's a spike in here the value hit 48 so that becomes the strongest buying signal right you ever had however that on the 20 however up to year 2008 right the 48 on the mid 40s becomes the strongest buying signal in 2008 the stock market not only went to 48 it went to 58 68 78 and finally 88 and it topped out at 88 that is the highest value it has ever achieved so if you buy around 48 you're pretty much halfway through losing all your money so that pretty much throw a wrench into the whole thing right because in the past and also in the book that the education of the spec of uh, the education of a uh, speculator by Victor Niederhofer he mentioned the 48 the mid 40 it's a level to be buying right so if you did that what's going to happen you're going to lose your money you cannot be buying at 48 so now that has changed a lot of the rules okay so let's touch base on the certain, certain specific range you have to be aware of and use now the current level is is 18 so 18 divided by 12 that will tell you the percentage movement uh, in the coming 30 days means the volatility how, how much is in swing now the highest level we had was uh, 2008 was 88 and the lowest level we had was about 993 remember when the value is low people are very complacent now remember 93 is also the time where the Malaysian stock market has this higher run so overall uh, the averages is between 20 to 30 that's like a no man's land it can go up uh, 50 points it can come down by 50 points so it can go both ways yeah 20 and 30 now the strongest buying signal before 2008 was 48 now remember that the 48 level it's just like Chinese for it's safe safe 
Okay, this is a good website you can look at. It's called indexindicator.com. I'm not going to dwell into it, but if you are going to be using or adopting uh, uh, Wix from now onwards, use this website indexindicator.com right because it actually tells you the value uh, every day and it have and it actually uh, able you to compare the S&P 500 to the Wix in here now the new rules okay this is the new rules for Wix because we have the uh, 2008 right uh, value of 88 now this value of 88 we're not sure whether it is an outlier or aberration or is part of the range that the worst is yet to come okay because before that the highest was only 48 but after 2008 the highest it went up to 88 so the 88 could be out so in, we conclude and and ensure that 88 is included so this is what I have now if the weeks okay goes above 40 okay you start nibbling this is thinking of buying when it's above 60 start buying when you're above 80, when the fear is the greatest, right? Buy it all because when the market is so panicky, right? Right at the bottom there, the market can snap back up. As we have seen in the, uh, the recent Japan earthquake, the market sell down just like the Tokyo Electric sell down so quick, right? Everybody was trying to get out of their position and jumping out. And you know what? Like just what Bill showed you in the earlier chart, the market just snapped back up. And again, it has proven in the last uh, chart that we have when we have that uh, sell down in March 8, the weeks also did not reach 48. So it did not create a lot of uh, panicky as it is. It just went up to about 30. Okay. Now, on the flip side, when this is where we are today. Today, week is uh, last Friday is about 17. So that is why I have designed this uh, presentation to tell you that we should be getting nervous about market being topish. Okay, we are under 20 now. The stock market can go lower, right? And when it hit under 15, we should start selling because between 15 to 10, people are so complacent; they are not buying anymore. Puts the only buying call because they know the market is going to go higher and higher. So it's no fun when everybody is fully invested. How are you going to make money when everybody is, is buying? I mean, just imagine uh, you are buying, I have bought, I have bought. So how is the market going to go higher? Right? So if the market is going to go higher, someone's going to trigger a sell. That's where the uh, wicks will move lower. So when it gets down to under 10, sell it all. That's it. Sell it all. Okay, and that's the point what I'm hanging on. So remember that this is a very important. If you that if you ever remember about my presentation, is these rules. Okay. Now, however, I have to uh, give you a caveat that I read so much to get to here, but you will would agree with me that using Wix is not good enough. It cannot be used as a standalone. However, you can improve its art and timing with using VSA. Now, those of you who have Trade Guider, uh, as Kevin has spoke about it, I congratulate you. We do having an offer. You should consider getting a Trade Guider as a tool, uh, as a tool for you to time and to give you better odds if you're going to get a market. Now, what we are looking at is the end of the rising market, a VSA uh, sign of weakness at the top in here or narrow spread. So those are things we will cover for those of you who is, who is coming about. So VSA and importantly by just even if you don't get VSA or, or trade guider, look at the market structure. What's the what is the background? What stage are we? Are we in distribution stage or are we in the accumulation accumulation stage now? That's important because you need to know where you are. Right. Uh, another one. Now, very quickly, I'm gonna go through it. Now, the Baltic Dry Index versus the U.S. S&P 500 Index. What is simply measure the BDI or the Baltic Dry Index measure the demand of shipping capacity worldwide versus the supply of dry bulk carrier. Okay. As you can see, the the blue line denotes the supply of shipping. Now, if there are more ships on the sea, moving from country to country, what does that tell you? That means there's economic activity, there's very healthy 
people are buying and consuming. And that's what happens from uh, 2001 all the way to 2007. The, as the Baltics move higher, the stock market move up. When the Baltics went down, partly the reason why of the stock market, it went down too. However, remember, huh? The uh, QE quantitative easing that came in in 2009, we have 1.75 trillion being pumped in in 2009, the first quarter and second quarter we have about 600 billion being printed in. So that you notice this point here, where the market should be going down in a line with the Baltic, but instead it gone higher. So that tells you there is actually a distortion to the global or in the sense the US economic health because so much money ample liquidity has been pumping that it distorted because a lot of people like it like it or not they use the stock market as a benchmark for the economic health of the country right now that, that, that's silly because if you use the stock market is going up like why are people so uh, unemployed now the employment in US we are touching about 9.5% uh, unemployment and almost in Malaysia compared to that in Malaysia we have no uh, unemployment right uh, stock prices has, has come down a lot in US almost by, by uh, one, one third but uh, Malaysian we are still going up right as you can hear from Azizi he is very bearish about the stock market so that is why we have to be prepared okay now uh, the unconventional index then this apply for the Malaysian investor because you have to know uh, what I've talked about earlier in the KLC timeline in the earlier slide. Okay, uh, the world tallest building and this is done by a research. His name is by Mr. Andrew Lawrence. He did it back in the nineteen uh, nineteen uh, early the early year two thousand. What he did he did a benchmark of all the world tallest building. And coincide with the economic crisis. Okay, the more recent one was the '97, when we have the uh, completion of the petrol, and then immediately we have the Asian crisis. Two zero one two, the Shanghai. Are we going to get the economic crisis, which is next year, right? So this study is called the skyscraper index, just like the Monopoly City. Uh, one of the games that I bought with my children, and the goal of it is try to beat the other player. To building the fastest skyscraper in the world, and that's what's actually happening. It back since back to 19, 19, right? Every major building that becomes the tallest building in the world is followed by an uh, economic crisis or economic sell-down, right? We have the uh, World Trade Center, then there was stagflation, then we have the Seal Tower, right? Then we have the Asian crisis, ninety seven, ninety eight. So all this boils down to one thing. our building. Do you know what's going to complete in 2015? If the uh, government intend to build the uh, 100 uh, story building at the old place, the Stadium Nagara site, I think they are already really, I mean take a drive up there, I believe they already do start doing piling. So would that lead us to a recession by 2015 or maybe it comes sooner? Now the same uh, model also models over in, in China. Now between 2013 and 2016, China intend to build 22 skyscraper, and a lot of these skyscraper are getting higher, taller, and even bigger. So would that lead to a recession? Certainly, there is a good chance of it. Right? So how do you protect yourself and your investment? I think that is the most key point in here. Right, diversified portfolio. We believe uh, the best time uh, is now. If you have any KLC position that's not making money, you should get out because by looking at the annual uh, trading month, April uh, is the strongest month. Now, those of you who don't know, right, the May and June are seasonally uh, very weak months, meaning the market tend to sell now. You heard the term before: sell in May and go away. That's what's happened and it also coincides with the ending of the QE2. So this half and the market has closed higher. So you don't want to be selling right when the market breaks the spine of the market. Okay, you want to be selling when everybody is so cheerful, right? What Warren Buffett say, right? You want to be selling 
when people are greedy. So that's my point. So the window opportunity is here. Look at that. Look at your charts, right? And uh, other things I will really recommend, which is aligned with Bill, is also to buy some silver and some gold ETFs, right? You can open up a global wrap account uh, with Philip Capital or any foreign account to get hold of these two codes. Huh? You might want to write down it's the ETF code called ETPMG for silver and for gold, okay? So you can see from this two chart we have in here, gold and silver since the beginning of uh, April has been rising higher. Now you notice that the ETPMG, which is a silver chart, now you compare that with the gold chart, which is higher, right? Which is higher? It's uh, the silver chart. ETPMG is the silver chart. So now gold is lower. So gold has to play catch up. So gold is going to go higher. And last night closing was what 1460. And when it broke through this, it's going to go higher, 1550 at least. Okay. Next thing, uh, be ready to buy inverse ETF, which actually short the market. Okay. Now, when you buy the normal ETF exchange, it actually goes up. But this one will benefit you when the market goes down. As we can see here, the SEF stands for short financial pro shares and the uh, DOGS, DOG, short Dow Jones 30 pro shares. So you can see the market has been down, uh, moving downtrend for the last two years after it peaking at 2018 here. So these are the two things. Be ready. Okay, so what to do during market crashes? Okay, don't panic. Right, you have attended this convention, so you know what to do. Don't panic. Okay, now the next question if I don't want to be in stocks and property, where should I do with my investment money? Okay, the next thing do I have a plan to get my money out of harm's way? And finally, should I go into another business? That's what Azizi Ali was talking about earlier. Uh, build another business to uh, recession proof you so you have another source of income to do. Right uh, now, this is the between the prepared and the unprepared. Look at this picture. This picture was taken from the Victoria Americana in 1875. And look at those people out there. What are those? Those are looks like balloon, right? They look like bubbles. They're gonna, they're gonna burst. Even back in the early nine, early uh, late 1875, people already talk about gold mine bubble. Bogus scheme bubble, big bonanza, lottery, speculation, gambling, fancy stock. So everyone is going for that. And guess what? That's the only way to grow old. The way to grow rich is hard work. Look at this uh, woman here. He's uh, typing and you got a man working in the background. And this is the industry. That's the only way to grow rich is to work hard. So my, my advice is to be prepared for an opportunity and not to have one when the opportunity and not prepared. Okay? So uh, about global wrap account, okay, this is the only slide I have to do a bit of my marketing. You, both of you know that uh, Bill is a fund manager and myself will be helping to manage fund. Now the global wrap account is the uh, a very unique account and is managed under a Malaysian asset management company and is approved by the SC, right, Securities Commission, and we are able to access global market ETF and ETC exchange traded commodities like the one I've shown you ETPMG and uh, gold right and and the great thing about this this account is that because a lot of the goals are transacted in US dollar now if you have a global wrap account you can buy and sell ETC commodity in Aussie dollar okay you can buy and sell in Aussie and you can keep the proceed in Aussie dollar too and not I uh, know and lose the exchange spread, right? And that could be a lot more. And the Philip Capital, that is the company we are. We are part of the Philip Philip Capital Group of Singapore, which have a size of a US six hundred million. So we don't go bust overnight. Okay. Uh the amount needed is a very low capital injection. The minimum is only fifty thousand ringgit. Okay, it's only fifty thousand ringgit. And the portfolio, a lot of people worry the portfolio is held by Philip Captain. No, it's held by the independent custodian. So if anything happens to the company, your share your shares or your ETC are safe. Okay. And who looks after them? Bill and myself. So with that, I'd like to thank you you uh, on talk. Be ready. Go out and make some money when the market stock market crash. Thank you very much.